You are listening to the Pink Sugar Podcast, here to empower, motivate, and inspire you. I'm your host, Martha, and this is your Monday Motivation Podcast, reminding you that you are more powerful than you could ever imagine. You're capable of pretty much anything you're willing to work for, and you actually can change your life, one positive thought at a time. I'm so excited you're here, and I can't wait for you to hear today's episode. Yeah! Welcome everyone to the Pink Sugar Podcast. I'm your host, Martha, and I'm so excited today because I have the pleasure of re- introducing you to Candy Ramirez. <laughs> um, Candy is an influencer, blogger, creator, traveler, mother. <laughs> she's from Tucson, Arizona. Um, she's the founder of Queen Bee Bakers, which is an online mentoring movement to support and inspire other bakers by educating and assisting them. Through this platform, she helps develop individuals' passions in money-making business. So, Candy travels the world with her business coaching, <laughs> in-person classes, um, and speaking engagements. Um, I had the honor of meeting Candy um, in one of her meet and greets here in New York. Um, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember my face? <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, it was awesome. And it was awesome to finally get to meet you because I always see you on social media and I see you posting and sharing everybody's work. So you're really inspiring. Um, and guys, Candy is more than a baker. She is also the owner of Mexi Sprinkles. She's a podcaster. She's an online. She has an online baking school where she shares free and paid tutorials. She's a blogger, a vlogger, <laughs> a creator of trends in the baking community, and she's a mother of three. And as you guys can see, she's also so beautiful. <laughs> so thank you so much. I'm extremely grateful for to have you in the podcast um, and for joining me today in, on this chat. I'm excited to share your story. <laughs> Mita, that was beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I don't think on all of it had such an amazing introduction. Yeah. You are just an amazing ray of something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so Thank tell me, you. how do you get all this motivation <laughs> and energy to, to just do all these things? It's inspiring. Coffee. Uh, <laughs> that's part of it uh, no, no honestly coffee is definitely one of my addictions uh, I love coffee but it, it truly it took a while for for me to have a routine especially me to have a routine with John because he has his own businesses and I have my own business so we had to make them mesh we had to make them work so we truly have a routine where we go to sleep early we wake up early we go to the gym for an hour to two hours. It just depends on if the baby woke up or if she's still asleep. Um, and we have my mother who's now living with us. So that just gives us so much more uh, leeway to do a lot more other stuff. So and we have a Because you're not leaving your just with anybody. <laughs> One, I mean... I, you know how important it is because your anxiety goes to the roof. Leave your child with like a babysitter or someone you don't know, you know, and your anxiety, it just goes to the roof, whether it be for a, you leave them at a daycare or something, but you know, no. um, but it's truly keeping to our routine. And even if we don't make the gym in the morning, it's, you know, getting up, uh, doing something mindful, waking up the children, uh, getting their breakfast done. And then going on my social media. That's why you see most of my posts are between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. My time. Oh, okay. Because I'm at the gym. Um, because I already got the kids ready. Or because the kids are still not up. So that's when my first post goes up. And that's my da- that's my daily routine. And I actually have, I literally had to make myself put an alarm on my phone. Ding! Wake up. Post on social media. Because... I feel social media is really important for anyone's business. Definitely, definitely. So it's a lot of coffee and having a good routine <laughs> that goes along with um, John's routine. With it has to work for you because I can. Yeah. No one's going to give you the magic uh, pill, the magic routine. It's got to work for you. So if waking up at five a.m. to go to the gym it does not work for you, then waking up at five a.m. going outside. And just listening to the birds, the trees, just feeling the sunshine or the air. A lot of people forget to just meditate. Just 
sit and enjoy the fact that they're alive. Yeah. So no, that's, you're, that's what's going. That yeah. I'm alive and I can be here for my children and create generational wealth for them. That's awesome. Definitely. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> um, so tell me, how and when did baking become a part of your life? Oh, man. So my great-grandmother was a baker. And when I say she was a baker, you know, it wasn't she owned a bakery or she didn't own an in-home bakery, but she was an in-home baker. She did baking for her church, her community, for the family. And, you know, grandmas like to make so much for the whole <laughs> neighborhood. <you>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was lucky enough that my mom was always working, but I got raised by my great grandmother. So I had that old school mentality of doing things from scratch, basically. So I would see her do everything. You name it, pan dulce, cakes, um, tamales. I mean, I got all that good fatty Mexican food. And I learned from the expert herself. And I, I think this is what humbles me to this day is that my great grandparents grew up in the great depression uh -huh. and they're from, you know, my great grandma was born in 1918. Can you believe that? 19 oh, hundred years ago. Wow. Over. Exactly. <laughs> but she's not with us today, but, but yeah. that's what keeps me humble. Yeah. And, and when I say humble, you don't have to be humble. I'm saying mentally humble is that if she was able to go through the great depression, if my Nana and my Tata were able to have nine children in that era and feed them all, I think I can run a business or two or a couple. Yeah, that's smart. That's a great way of thinking. Um, now, I know that you and Nelly Galan, you guys, you know, I know she's a big part of your entrepreneurial life. Um, can you tell me a little bit how you met Nelly and, and the Adelante movie? Oh, of course. So the way I met Nelly, she's an amazing woman. I don't know how she does it all, first of all. You think I do a lot? <laughs> no. She is, I, she must have coffee times 20 because she not only has the energy, but she travels more than a lot of business people that I know and she do to help women and bring awareness and show them how business works. Um, but I met her at an event that I was not going to attend. Because I was so nervous. There was 300 women that were in business or that worked for big businesses. And a friend of mine said, you should make cake for this woman that's coming in. And I said, uh, nah, not my gig. Like, I don't have business clothes. I'm not. Mind you, I'm literally, I just got done being homeless living out of my car. And I had just uh -huh. got a duplex. So my confidence was, like, not where it needed to be. Oh my God. So my friend convinced me. She's like, look, you know, how about we pay you? And I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> you're going to have to pay me. But she convinced me. So when I got to the event, the day of, I was like so nervous, so intimidated. I was just like, there's no way I can't do this. So I started turning around to go back to my home. And my friend saw me and she's like, I see you. Hurry up, bring in the cake. You know, and I was like, damn it. I don't, like I was just, such a nervous wreck in my chef coats and jeans. Oh. I walk in there. Everyone's in a business suit. Oh my and God. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? And again, my confidence level was like, Boop. so I go in there. I deliver the cake. I got to hear her listen to, her. I never heard no one in my life had ever like spoken to me the way she was speaking to these women in the crowd. So I was very intrigued. And, uh, so I waited, all 300 women went, took a picture with her, said hi to her after she, you know, she was done. And at the end, I presented her the cake. And she said, this is amazing. Did you make this? Yeah. And I said, in my head, I didn't think it was that amazing because yeah. I could see the flaws. I mean, uh, you, seen the cake, you know, yeah. yeah, I was like, this isn't amazing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, she's You're a like, millionaire <laughs> woman. You have to say nice things to people, right? Yeah. And uh, no, she's like, she was like, for real. She's like, this is amazing. She's like, you're beautiful. What else do you do? This, this, that. And like, in my head, I was like, okay, yeah. And, but I was loving the compliments. Yeah. And she's like, look, here's my card. Send me an email. 
I, I have this perfect project for you. And that was it. She, that was it. So I didn't email her for a good three months. Crazy, right? Because again, yeah. my confidence wasn't there. I know. So when I summoned the courage to email her, one of my lowest points of my life, I emailed her and I said, you know what? I, I, I'm taking a leap of faith. What is it that you had in mind? From there, she got me in contact with Coca-Cola. They were doing um, this whole movement for the Adelante. It's called uh, 5 by 20. So mm -hmm. they want 5 million women by year 2020 to have their own business and educate themselves in financial um, industries and, and just learn the overall what it takes to become a business uh, woman. Mm -hmm. So I was one of the first and in Arizona. I was the first in Arizona, mm -hmm. and uh, they chose me, so we, they did a story on me, and literally after that, it was like a snowball effect. I just started saying yes to things. Yeah, I bet your confidence level just went through the roof. Through the roof. Yeah. So, with the Adelante movement, I was able, she basically said, Candy. So the Adelante movement is about empowering women, showing them what they need to do for business, how to make money, because, you know, facts, like women are paid less than men. Uh, Latina women are paid less than um, white women. You know, she was yeah. just giving me all these facts. And then she taught me a lot more how to be business savvy, how to just take no bullshit from no one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she That's really took me under her wing. Uh -huh. uh, what are we, six years later, I'm now heading the Adelante movement out here in Arizona, and we're going to have one in each state, and we have some big plans coming up, and it involves a huge building, a conglomerate, where a, a, women from anywhere can come in and get help for, you know, taxes, uh, to get a loan, or to get a grant, or to start a business, or if you don't know where do you want to go, or social media help, anything. So we have a lot of fun stuff coming up. I'm super excited. That's exciting. But, um, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to learn more about that. And I did watch your video, the Coca-Cola video. And, you know, uh, when, I, when I watched it and when I, because I watched it a while, a, long, a while ago and then I rewatched it again before our interview today. And you know what? It was, it was really inspiring. Like, and if you guys are listening to me, you need to head over to queenbeefeaters.com and go check out that video. Because it is really inspiring. I mean, I know you talk about being homeless. Um, can you share with me a little bit about that and how you made it, you know, how you pushed through? Because that's tough. That's a tough situation. You know, I think having the adversity at such a young age, um, my mother wasn't really a constant in my life. Um, now she is, and we'll get to that later. But she wasn't a constant in my life, and she herself didn't know how to be a mother. So I basically raised me and my brother at a very young age. And with that came a lot of responsibilities. And becoming homeless, it, I wouldn't say it was a choice. Because a lot of people say homeless people want to be homeless because it's a choice. It wasn't a choice. It was, I was uneducated in finances. I was uneducated in my rights of being an employee at different places. Um, you know, just not having the confidence or knowing the system um, because I was on Section 8, I did receive food stamps, and I still could not get by. Yeah. What, for me, it was just a lack of education or knowing what I could have done differently or I, I did not know because I really didn't have my, my mother didn't know because we, we didn't have the education. Yeah. So becoming homeless, I... It wasn't a choice. It was more of a desperation thing. Yeah, it, it, it's like it, it's so weird to say because it, it was it's a snowball. Yeah, effect. and I do know a lot of homeless teen girls that I currently work with right now that do live out of their car, and some choose to because they don't want to be in the environment that they they were in, okay. and that was part of why I became homeless. I'd rather live in my car with my one year old son and go hustle K-pops in the corner at Walmart because I didn't want to be in the environment that my mother was providing for, for me and my son at the, at the time. Yeah. And 
the way I got out of that was literally hustle, 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 hustle. Yeah. yeah. Working my, I took my son to most of my jobs. I would beg and plead, you know, whatever job I had, can, can my son sit in the office or I would sneak him in. People did not even know my son was there. Oh my God. You're brave. Again, routine. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. knew his routine, you know, when he woke up, when he was hungry, when, and yeah, it was very brave of me because I could have gotten fired. But at that moment I had to do what I had to do to survive. Yeah. And, you know, I started saving money to get by. It was never enough money to live off of. So I contacted friends. Can I sleep with, at your house? And I never told anyone I was homeless. Nobody. Okay. No one knew nothing. Not my grandparents on his father's side. Um, I even told my mom, yeah, I'm living with my friend. I'm living the good life. I, yeah. you know, I didn't. My family, no one knew. Okay. One because I was so ashamed. I was so ashamed and I didn't want that stigma. I didn't want people to, you know, look at me and be like, uh, like you're, I don't know, you know, the stigma, there's a stigma yeah. behind it. I mean, you're also really young at that time and, and your pride is, is, is there. 100%, you know, your ego is like, yeah, I'm, yeah. no one's going to know that I'm homeless. Yeah. I'm, and, I was a young mom too. So I, I, I felt that, you know, I didn't want to let it, I didn't want to let anybody down. So it is, it is hard. And you know, that's very brave of you. I applaud you for that. Um, and I'm, I'm really getting happy. out of that was hard, but it can be done as long as you're willing to educate yourself. Yeah. Definitely. And it's a great learning. It, it, I'm, I'm sure for you, it was a great learning experience. I mean, you, you were in, in your lowest low. So now that, that you're up there and you're just like, I can keep going. I mean, I've, I've been, I've been through worse, <laughs> you know? Listen, this is what I tell everyone. If you've been homeless and if you've had nothing, I've lost everything three times in my life. Okay. And if, if that can happen to you, just know that at any moment something can happen you can die your spouse can die and i know it's harsh to say it that way but it's reality i mean a lot of people live in a bubble and we shouldn't live in a bubble we should live in reality mm -hmm. anything can happen to you at any moment so i think that's what keeps me going because i'm so grateful for everything that's given to me and i'm just so grateful to have the ability to learn because we live in usa that means us women even though we get paid less even though you know we have so many opportunities that a lot of women in, that don't live in the U.S. have. So I am so grateful to be born in the USA. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. So the Queen Bee Bakers movement, what, how did you come up with that? Oh, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> that's actually an interesting story. That happened because I got bullied on social media. Oh. Hmm. Oh my God, you've been through everything. <laughs> well, and, and you know, I, there's a sunshine to every yeah. rainy day. Yeah. What happened was I felt a friend of mine that we would go into business I in my head and I never communicated it to her. So I never knew how she felt. And that's my fault on my end. So I said, oh my God, you know, I do cakes too. You do cakes. We're going to be, you know, in my head. We're going to be, you know, yes, just awesome fair. bakers in a bakery. We're going to own our own bakery. We're, we're going to take over Arizona. Yeah. But little did I know she was feeling intimidated, that she was feeling that I was taking from her. And I'm not saying that her feelings are justified, but I never communicated them with her. Yeah. So because she felt this way, she expressed herself to other individuals, other than our friends, you know, family. And then they started posting on social media that, yeah. you know, I wanted to be like her and I'm just trying to be her. And I get it. Like, I get it. That was one of my lowest points because I thought she was my best friend. I made her the godmother of my child. I, you know, I, she helped me out when I was homeless. I just felt so crushed that I felt like I owed her something. Like, I owed it to her to not be a baker because I made her feel some type of way. Yeah. So, I shut down shop. I, like, I was, like, I got off of social media. I was crushed because I thought she was, like, a sister. Yeah. So, I was crushed. I was like, yeah, 
I'm not even going to do this. I mean, if I make her feel intimidated or I make her feel like I'm copying her, then why am I even doing this? Yeah. So after that, um, you know, shit happens, life happens. I, I try to reach back out to her. It, it, it was never the same ever. Yeah. So when I came back on social media, I said, I don't want anyone to ever feel this way ever again and feel like that their passion or whatever they're good at has to be put behind them or, or, or they have to suppress it because someone else feels a certain type of way. Why We shouldn't be feeling this way. We should be communicating our feelings. Yeah. And if a friend is truly a friend, they're going to support you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, definitely. So that's where Queen Bee Bakers came because I was like, well, I'm the Queen Bee Baker. Yeah. As a pun, as a, as a, like a dig, like yeah. <laughs> I, I'm the shit. But it was a joke, and it yeah. and it took off because of the platform of motivating others to just do what they want to fucking do. Yeah, that's awesome. That's definitely, and I love your slogan: "Learn, create, inspire, inspire. aspire." Inspire. The Queen Bee Baker way. I love that so much, and um, thank you. I love that, you know, I love that you motivate other people. I, you know what, my, the, the, mo- the main thing that attracts me to you is the fact that you share other people's work. Um, I, I truly love that because there's not too many people that do that. And, and I bet well, there's all there, share it for the likes or the follows. Yeah. But I like that you do it. You know, it's a, it's a confidence booster. I, I think you've shared my, one of my kicks before and I'm like, Oh my God, it's got shared. And it, it was, it's, it's awesome. So now, can you tell me, out of everything that you do, which one is your favorite? What is your favorite thing to do? I don't think I could pick one. (laughs) Honestly, I love creating, and I love sculpting, and I love creating our edible art. I I love all that. Um, You know what? I I do like creating videos. I do like doing that. I, I, I do. I do. I do like creating the videos to show the process of the cake coming together, but I don't get a lot of time to do that. Yeah. So that's why I do everything else. I, I, I mean, I, I love creating and I'm very passionate about it. So maybe, you know what, maybe, yeah, maybe it's creating the cakes, but I, I generally love everything else I do on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you do so much. So that's awesome. I, I, cause I, I always see you, you know, you're doing so much. I'm like, I wonder what her one favorite thing is to do. <laughs> no, I, I think, it's cakes. Yeah. <laughs> so now, what do you what are you proud of yourself for most? I don't. You know, you've been through so much. What are you proud of? What do you feel like? Good telling people um, that you. Um, man, going deep, huh? <laughs> uh, I I used to be an addict uh, to opioids, and I kicked my habit, and I've never looked back since. And with within that it empowered me because if I can do that I feel like I can help others you know whether it's an addiction or not I mean it could be someone that's like you know I'm really jealous of my friend she does the same business as me so uh, I in my head I'm gonna reverse it and be like well how can we have you work with your friend and this is what I do now to help businesses grow how can we help with your friend so you're not jealous because jealousy comes from inside it's not a thing someone else is doing. It's, I like to say you, when you don't like someone or you're jealous of them, it's something that you don't like about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely learned that. Like, I've, I've learned that a lot through everything, through, like, taking business courses and everything. It's more of, like, when you're, when something uh, somebody says affects you, it's because of you. It's not because of... Yeah, yeah. it's not that. The other not, nobody can affect your emotions other than yourself. Yeah. If, if you know, and, and that's why, you know, social media, I've been attacked. A lot of other people have been attacked. I, I'm an, I'm a human. We can be petty. Yeah. We can, we can be wrong, but we're human. I mean, like, I don't hate on someone that doesn't like me and will do a smear campaign about me. For example, I feel sorry for that person because I feel like something's going wrong with them their heart inside their mind that they have to go after someone whether it be me or someone else they're in so much pain that they feel like they have to go after someone yeah. so for me on uh, I'm thinking of my doctorate in psychology so this is where the psychological comes yeah. uh, I, 
I feel like, how can I help that person? Like, I want to give them a big hug and say, it's going to be okay. You don't have to go this route. But some people don't want to listen. They don't understand. And it's, it's, it's kind of sad because yeah. you want everyone to succeed, you know? Yeah. You feel bad for them. Like, yeah. So I'm most proud of myself of kicking my addiction and my mom's been so a good eight months and I'm, I feel more helping my mother be clean. That's great. That's awesome. That's, that, that's really nice. Um, okay. So here's another question. <laughs> Tell me of a time that you failed, like you failed and you're like, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> failed in relationships, <laughs> failed in business, failed in life. I mean. Well, maybe maybe one that you failed, but you got back up like 100% stronger. Um, like your biggest win course. after failing. Hmm? Cake Wars. We lost. Oh, it. yeah. Oh, my God. I bet. Yeah. You know what? That's so intimidating. Every time I think about that going on tv and like but i did see that episode was that your husband with you yeah yeah oh my god uh, that's so awesome so you so, guys lost cake wars and how how was that um for me i was pregnant at the time so the emotions uh, okay. was mostly just being sick and just trying to get through the day i knew it was reality tv and yeah. i knew that if we lost for me it wasn't a loss because marketing side social media side mm -hmm. share yeah you know we had this experience it was a wonderful experience i loved it me and my husband we loved it we loved okay. every minute yeah. of it okay and um so it wasn't a, it was a fail but it wasn't really a fail it was okay. a learning lesson. okay yeah so that's one of one of my big i mean for people watching they're like oh you were the first one to leave so i you know, know. Yeah, that's, right yeah but but I think because mentally I have already prepared myself for a lot of stuff. And again, I've gone through a lot of adversity. For me, it wasn't a fail. It was a, a learning lesson. And I know how the networks work. And I've become great friends with TV producers. Okay. So for me, it was a lot of takeaway from that failure. Okay. All right. That's good. That's cool. No, that's good. You know what? I've been thinking about that. And I've been trying to convince my husband to do it. So listening do to it. say that. <laughs> I will send you my fr my friends. Um, three of them, they're casting directors. They're looking for people, so I will send you their email, and you just be like, "Okay, what do I got to do?" All right, all right, all right. Even okay. if you fail, yeah, it's it's an awesome opportunity. All right. list. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely on my bucket list. <laughs> all right. So, how do you continue to innovate? Um, what inspires you to keep going every day? Is there my kids. Your kids, all right, yeah. The, the number one asset that moms have are children, but yeah. we don't necessarily listen to them, right? Because we're too busy focused on our business, getting our orders done. So when I'm trying to create something new, I will huddle my children, even Bella. I will huddle them in a circle and be like, what do you think is hot? What do you think is cool? What's the new trend? What's right. Because the biggest generation demographic are 13 to 20 year olds yeah so why wouldn't you be listening to that demographic definitely definitely oh. i discovered my kids too i'm like they're my taste testers because they're yeah. you know, the taste buds are different than ours we have like everything they're very picky <laughs> utilize your children and yeah. you know what uh, your children are funnier than you think and if you would just you know sit down pay attention to them film them uh, you'll probably get a viral video with all the crazy kooky yeah. things that they do. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So how do you wind down? Um, we already have a set routine, like just like a morning routine at 7 PM. We get everyone and, and that might sound early, but I'm telling you, I've tried every routine okay. and we've tried every which route. I mean, we're a household of six. So, we need to make sure everyone, I have a routine for my kids. You know, you wake up, do your bed, all the normal stuff. Um, and it's just like that at bedtime. When we're going to go to bed, you go take your shower, you come home, you go in your room, you read for five, 10 minutes. And then we, if we have time, we try to meditate, which most of the time we don't have time, but we try yeah. okay. and we find down the mind because we're living in a social media age. Social media is great. 
Social media is amazing. Technology is amazing. But our brains sometimes don't know how to turn it off. Yeah. So you got to sit down, wind it down, talk about your day, what was great. Uh, you know, one of the models, I forget who it is, but, you know, what did you fail at today? What did you learn today? What have you, what did you do at school? And it's, and it's really just helped just bring the family together. And, and I do that with my mom too and my, and John. And, you know, we have kid time and we just wind down, we play a mental game and then we go to bed. That's awesome. You go to bed at seven? <laughs> Girl, oh my God. <laughs> seven, I mean, on the late days, it's 8.30. Okay. I used to go to bed at 2 a.m. and I, I would be running like a mad woman yeah. and not have half the shit done. Now that I go to sleep early and wake up early, okay. I get everything done. Oh, so, all right. So that might work. Yeah, I'm going to definitely try that. Um, I set my phone, like, it, it has, like, a sleep time, and then so it, it does, like, the do not disturb, so I get no text messages, nothing past. I don't look at my phone past past 7.38. I rarely post past 8, yeah. but that's my cutoff time because I do a survey on my Instagram story. I'm like, what, what, um, what cake theme do you want to see tomorrow? Okay. I cut it off at 7.00. And then I leave it. And then the next morning, it's just starting. You got to have a routine for yourself yeah. and what works. All right. That's great. I hope you guys are listening. Got to have a routine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, can I ask you, do you still have that mini pig? Oh, we have, we gave him to a sanctuary only because where we're at right now, he was so smart. We're going to get him back as soon as we get our, our, we finish our house, but he would get out through this gate and we would, we would cement it. He found a way to bite through the water, you know, big teeth. Um, but no, we still have him. He's at a sanctuary. He's big and fat. Oh, and, I, I remember yeah. when you first got him and I would watch your videos and I think you were on the <laughs> Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell me, how would you like to end 2019? Um, what do you What do you feel like this year's biggest goal is? If you want to share it, I mean. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I have a few more product lines, um, that I want to bring out. Not necessarily in the cake industry, but um, you know, we've gotten into real estate. We've got into investment financials, and um, I want to learn more. I just I want to learn so much that my brain's like okay no more learning which yeah. is impossible because yeah. we learn every day uh -huh. um you know just just learning more of what john does okay. i feel as a baker if i would have known what i know now i would have gone a different route okay now that being said i love baking and i love creating and i love sculpting and i love doing all that i want people to really do what makes them happy so at the end of the year, I mean, I'm already doing <laughs> what I want to do. Yeah. But at the end of the year, I, I, I guess to just touch more people, like yeah. see more people, travel more, um, you know, get these. I know these product lines are going to come out. So it's, it's a question if. It's just more. I want to help more people like you. Like I, I want to. Whatever it is, how can I help you? Okay. All right. I, I think that's the route for 2020 is more traveling. Can I help you? We have a show that I am pitching to a network and I'm going to have to do, I know I'm going to have to do a lot more leg work, but I mean, a lot of this stuff has just been in the making, you know, in yeah. little baby steps in the making. And I'm just so excited because I'm so grateful. Like, how are you not grateful to be alive, yeah. especially in this era? Anyone could be famous. Anyone can be an entrepreneur. Anyone could be a business owner. You have it in the palm of your hands. Definitely. So where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, good one. <laughs> At home making videos still. Because <laughs> I love doing it. I yeah. love doing it. But I, I think um, in five years, it's such a short time frame. Like it's going to come like that. Yeah. In five years, I'll probably be working on Bella's, you know, social media, on YouTube, on the kids. I'll be focusing more on the children. All right. Hopefully, in the next five years, I can help more people. Yeah. So, 
keep giving back to my children because I, I get so caught up helping people that I forget, you know, my children also need me too. Yeah. Yes, they have a great example. Yes, they have us to look up to, but we need to be present for them as well. So I see you having a talk show on the Food Network, helping other bakers. That's what I see. <laughs> I need you to get out. Are you a fly on my wall right now? I have not told anyone anything. That's what I see. You see? There you go. Who knows? <laughs> We're going to have to talk after this. But <laughs> you, you, you're you kind of on the same route. You you're, you're you did good. You're, like the, you're going to be like the Oprah of bakers. <laughs> Aww, you're the sweetest. I'll, I'll be the... I'll the old Nana Baker telling you not to put that on your Instagram to do a different angle, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So, um, who's your biggest hero? <sighs> John. Oh my God. That's so nice. That's sweet. I love that. He you know, he, he's, he's gone through a lot. A lot of people don't know, but he's gone through a lot. He passed away in the hospital and they brought him back to life oh when he got, God. he had a stroke. Yes. And he had to regain all his strength. He couldn't hold the baby. He couldn't walk. Um, he could, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, I wasn't on social media as much, but I didn't share that with anyone. And, uh, yeah, he, he has gone such a long way and he's just kicking ass and, he cool. he doesn't know how much he means to me. He he's truly been my my uh, ride or die. Yeah. And um, after him, it's it's Nelly. That's awesome. That's nice. I love that. I like that you said your husband was your your biggest hero. How would you like your to end your legacy? How would you want people to talk about you and and say you know Candy Ramirez was was who? kind she was nice nice yeah she was, she was someone i could talk to and she wasn't judgmental that's awesome and and you're not you're you're a really great person oh yeah. thank you i'm on my way <laughs> <laughs> all right this is a little fun it's kind of like i guess i would call it like a little rapid fire but it's for fun what's your favorite song right now or um uh, I have it. I have it. It's uh, Cardi B's. Um, I would say Bodak Yellow still. I don't know why. Okay. I, I, it's like a good hype song. It's like, yeah. I love Cardi B. She's really killing it right now. She's very like girl power and empowering just everybody. I love that. I love her. She's the epitome of having nothing, working your ass off, whether you're a stripper or not, and just kicking ass oh. because she's working her ass off. Yeah, hell yeah. She is killing it right now. What's your favorite TV show? Ah, uh, The or Good Doctor. The good, the the Good Doctor. Yeah, that okay. and Bob's Burgers. I could watch Bob's. Oh, Burgers. I love Bob's Burgers. Oh my God, my family is like Bob's Burgers. I have three kids just like that. I have two girls, a boy. <laughs> we actually dressed up as Bob's Burgers for for um. Oh my. For Halloween. <laughs> we are obsessed with Bob's Burgers. Yeah. I I don't think a lot of people understand the humor because it's yeah. it's dry and then it's like out of nowhere um, but that's totally us too <laughs> um, your favorite book oh self-made hello yeah duh. <laughs> um your favorite podcast uh it's gotta be joe rogan right now i oh. i'm obsessed be, and i'll tell you why you know a lot of women don't like his podcast because yeah. they hear <laughs> one thing against and it's not even against women he just has an a plethora of people that go on his show and that's a bucket list of mine to go on his show and he ranges from talking about marijuana to talking about you know um the acting industry to talking about mental health so mm -hmm. it, he just go, he's my favorite right now he's like a bipolar podcaster that's what i <laughs> It's you just know, so many everything. things, like so many controversial things and just... 100%. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, your favorite food? Uh, coffee. Is that a food? <laughs> 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 All right. That's a good one. Um, and your favorite dessert? Oh, man. Uh, Mexican vanilla cake with strawberry filling will get me oh, every yeah. time. 
Okay, all right. Is I'm it a like a, a Mexican strawberry shortcake type of thing? Yeah, kind of. Okay. I mean, I prefer mine, but okay. I, mean, I love it. <laughs> and flan. If you make a good flan. flan oh. Oh. Okay. If you make a good flan, I, oh, I'll love you forever. I gotta send you a flan. I, mean, I, I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> Is there, is there this, like, I mean, cookies? I love chocolate chip cookies. I'm telling you, I'm getting diabetes talking about it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, all right. So now before we leave, I just want to ask you a few, you know, winding down questions. Um, mm -hmm. What are you most grateful for? My life. That's awesome. All right. I respect that. Um, <laughs> can you share some words of wisdom or like, what I'd like to call, because I don't know if you know, my podcast is released on is going to be released on Mondays for like a Monday motivation. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. So, um, can you share some Monday motivation for our listeners? Don't be afraid to grow and don't be afraid of your friends growing either. Okay. Um, you, you, can't, you can't be afraid of the unknown and just, you know, look at fear, punch it in the face and keep going. You know, like my mentor, Nelly Lan says, if you have to go slow as a turtle, but still go. Yeah. And don't be afraid of anyone around you growing. Be, be embrace their success because once you embrace other success, that's will come to you as well. As long as you're working hard and doing the right things, mm -hmm. they're going to be successful too. Okay. And I love using the analogy of Walmart and target. There can be two of you. There can be three of you. There can be, there's enough money in the economy and, and knowing all the financial background that I know now, there's endless amounts of money. So there's no need to fight about who's doing what. Yeah. It's whoever's the best is going to win. Yes. Whoever works the hardest, right? <laughs> 100%. Yeah. All right. Now, before we say goodbye, is there anyone you want to shout out on the podcast? Ooh, um, let's see. Everyone, follow Nellie Galan. I mean, there's there's no reason you shouldn't be following her. Uh, your cake diva, hello. John, hello. <laughs> oh, man, there's just so many of them. Uh, my sweet sugar crew, uh, that's Nancy, Alicia, Amy, Mandy, uh, Anna. I mean, there's just so many of you. Cake pop stamps. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. everyone I work with Toyota for giving me a car every week woo -woo. Nice. Um, I mean everyone that, that, that believes in me and works with me and you know I've gone through so many so many people, businesses, companies don't be afraid to work outside your realm um, one marketing tip before we do leave is work with everyone if you're in baking Coach realtors, let them know that you can make cupcakes for an uh, open house. Uh, barter with them. Figure out how you can work with a dentist. Figure out someone's always having an event. Work with big corporations, big businesses. Go into the office and say, hey, I can cater your next event. Don't be afraid. That's where the money's at. Awesome. Thank you for that. And where can we find Candy and the Queen Bee Bakers? <laughs> you can find me everywhere Facebook, Instagram, MySpace I'm just kidding um, <laughs> <laughs> MySpace was like the coding, like I learned to code because of MySpace <laughs> yes, me too <laughs> you had to make your codes to get those certain yes. gifts do you remember? oh my yes. god I, I, love so <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean I'm all over. It's all right. uh, Candy Queen Bee Baker, but that's on every platform. YouTube, Instagram, um, queenbeebakers.com. You can find me everywhere. All right. Awesome. All right, guys. You heard that right. Don't forget to follow Candy Ramirez. Um, you can visit her at www.queenbeebakers.com. That's her main hub. And then on all social platforms. And thank you guys for listening today. And thank you, Candy, for being a part of my podcast. Thank you for supporting thank you for having me. No, thank you for supporting me. I love you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Pink Sugar Podcast. And if you found yourself empowered, motivated, and inspired by today's episode, share it with all your friends and family and let them know about the Pink Sugar Podcast. 
And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and on Twitter at The Pink Sugar Podcast. For more episodes and information on any one of my guests, visit me at www.pinksugarpastries.net forward slash podcast. Thank you guys. Stay awesome. Bye.